Hello and welcome to another 5.9 gaming video. Uh, today we wanted to discuss how Mario has been able to establish himself as the quintessential video game mascot. Uh, and to join me today is Mario expert himself, Hazink. How are you doing? How are you doing, homie? Doing well. Doing well. Again, I just want to note to people, it's not that I'm wearing the same t-shirt for three days. We've recorded three videos at the one time, so yay. <laughs> no, he just doesn't change his clothes. Come on. Yeah, we that, that as well. Let, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Um, let's first start by defining what a mascot is. Merriam-Webster defines a mascot as a person, animal, or object adopted by a group as a symbol symbolic figure, especially to bring them good luck. I think it's perfectly fine to say that Mario has brought Nintendo plenty of luck. And uh, Nintendo has had many choices throughout their time in the industry to establish a different character as their main mascot. So, Hazink, why do you think Mario has overcome these other characters and reached eternal fame? Honestly, probably um, promotion more than anything else. I think the fact that Nintendo decided early on they wanted this to be their mascot and they decided that they were going to use them to head up their best ideas, put his face everywhere. Yeah. Um, they, they basically put him front and centre. They didn't they didn't dwindle with their resolve when they wanted them to be the main thing you associate when you think Nintendo. Um yeah. I mean if you were to say to ten random people, tell me two things about Nintendo, I, I pretty much bet at least all ten of them would say Mario at some point in that like out of the top two things. Um it's ingrained into people now that Mario is just he is he is Nintendo and it's because from the word go Nintendo done things like they put the character into Punch Out even though he wasn't yeah. playable they put him in Punch Out as the referee. Um, I mean, especially with the NES, he's in so many different titles that aren't necessarily Mario titles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I mean, Mario. It's now called Mario Golf, but on the NES it was just simply called Golf, you know. And Mario yeah. was still in that. Um, they they know what they're doing, Nintendo, and they decided straight out the gate. We have this idea, we have this little guy, we can market him, we can make money off him, and we can make people become attached to the character, and that's what they've done. They've just ran with it, and it's never looked like it's ever going to falter. In fact, they could probably yeah. go further with Mario than they've went, um, which this year they may well do, but we'll see what happens. So I, I kind of have a question that's kind of off the script here. Do you remember a time where Mario pretty much wasn't? Uh, the main mascot has Nintendo ever tried to stray away from that in in your memory? I've never really thought of Nintendo as trying to ditch Mario. Um, I mean, when Pokemon started to take off and stuff, they like kind of almost tried to associate other things with Nintendo. Like, yeah, for a while it felt like in the N sixty four era they were really pushing Pokemon. Like, you get the Pikachu edition of the Pokemon uh, of the. The 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, for, the yeah. for the Game Boy, it was the same because obviously Pokemon became really synonymous with the Game Boy. They were, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It was almost as if they were trying to make Pokemon the, the Game Boy mascot, but it was still Mario. I mean, I, I can't yeah. personally remember a time where Mario has not always been front and center for okay. Nintendo. So what are some of the qualities um, that make Mario not just a great character, but such a phenomenal mascot? Is there anything in particular that, you know, makes him good at that job i think honestly i think it's the games more than the character if i'm being completely honest with you they've mm -hmm. always put mario into good games mario himself yeah. doesn't have a personality really i mean obviously in later games it's become fleshed out but originally he was a little plumber guy the reason he was pl a plumber i think was because in the original games you would go down pipes I, I literally think that was nintendo's logic do you know what i mean goes down pipes mm -hmm. let's make him a plumber um there was no real story other than there was a big bad dragon monster that wanted to steal the princess and you had to go and save her you know it was just good level design it was good supporting characters it was a colorful cast of enemies i i i think the games made mario rather than mario made the games if that makes you sense know, m maybe that's what makes him a good mascot too though is that there's not too much depth you know, yeah. it's very easy to figure out what Mario is, yep. what he's about, and yep. then there's no like 
you know, you have to go watch an hour long video to really understand his backstory. There isn't one, you know. Well, it's yeah, a, that's true. I mean, that is actually an interesting segue to talk about something that we're going to mention later on with regards to other mascots. I don't want to jump exactly. ahead, but I need yeah, to try and we'll, we'll I need to try and table now. table that in my head so that I can remember to bring it up later on. Okay. Well we'll try and bring that up. Uh next though I have um I'd say the closest I'm running for Nintendo's mascot outside of the Mario franchise. Um and besides Pikachu too, because I consider in my head I'm like that's Game Freaks, but that is Nintendo's too. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's most likely Link. Do you agree? Do you think Link's like the second one? Yeah, I mean Link's pretty damn. Link's pretty damn synonymous with Nintendo. The thing is, but the other mm -hmm. the other thing you've got to remember as well is, despite the fact that they are all part of the Mario verse, I think you could mm -hmm. argue the same thing for Donkey Kong and Yoshi as well. Um, they're kind of seen in the same regard but again they're, yeah. part of, they're part of the mario verse and it ties into what we were talking about so if we're looking mm -hmm. outside of mario then yeah i'd say the other character that was pretty synonymous with nintendo and probably could be a mascot character to a certain extent would be link but i think there's reasons why he's not why do you think so i think it's more because his games are limited to a more a smaller subset of people and um, Exactly. There's far mm -hmm. more people that like platformers. I mean, platformers have no barrier for entry, really. You can pick them up, you can play them. Um, Zelda, uh, uh, early Zelda didn't really have, but as Zelda's developed, it started to implement more RPG mechanics and stuff like that. And yeah. RPGs just aren't for everyone, you know. Not everyone wants to play a scrolling open world game the way that Breath of the Wilds went. Breath of the Wilds brilliant, yeah. you know. It gives you weapon options and stuff like that, but there's a lot of people that just aren't here for that. They'd rather just have a little guy who simply picks up a mushroom, gets big and jumps on something's head, or gets a tail, it can smack something out the road it's simple it's intuitive you can just pick it up you can play it whereas whereas with zelda um the zelda titles there's lore there's things that people get confused about like oh wait a minute why is this character the same character but he's not the same character that was in previous games and you know it's yeah it, it can get I mean, you have people getting people. stuck on calling him zelda still you know it's been what 25 years yeah and people still call him zelda yeah um I, I, that wasn't a mistake on my part i was i was referring to the zelda no no, no i know i know i know that was just something i was thinking about because when i was writing up the script i even wrote uh, is most likely Zelda, even though I meant Link, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's just, there's a disconnect between Link as a Nintendo mascot, fun-loving character, mm -hmm. and him being a super serious um, video game character. I, I think, like we said with Mario, there's not a whole lot of depth to him, while Link has so much lore around him, it's yep. kind of hard to uh, connect easily to someone like Link. That kind of ties into the thing that I want to talk about as well with regards to other video game mascots. We, we were saying before mm -hmm. about Mario, maybe the fact that he is this sort of a, I don't want to say personalityless entity, but you know what I mean? He doesn't have this yeah. deep story behind him um, is why he's so endearing. You've just touched on it there with Link. He's maybe not as endearing as Mario for that very reason. And again, I do think that applies to other video game mascots. Yeah. Well, speaking of other mini, uh, video game mascots, I I have kind of a short list I could think of off the top of my head of uh, the most iconic ones. We got, you know, of course, Mario, Pikachu, Sonic, Pac-Man, among many others. I'm sure people have their own favorites that they'd like to bring up. Do you see any qualities that make these mascots stand above the rest, whether it be something they each have that's unique or something that they all share? Is there anything you see that, you know, helps them elevate to the top? There's a couple more I want to toss on there as well. I think you yeah, could you could include Master Chief. I, I do think you could include Master Chief. I also think you could include, for a period anyway, Crash Bandicoot because I think Sony yeah. did. Sony did want him to be their mascot on the PlayStation you, you One. Could, there um, were some other ones I thought about too, like Spyro could even be on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, but I think where a lot of them fall down, except maybe Sonic. I think Sega simply dropped the ball with Sonic. Um, the Mm -hmm. they, they didn't make the jump to 3d well enough they didn't do it um i mean yeah, yeah people won't really argue that sonic adventure one is a, a good game i don't want to say sonic adventure one's a great game i'll say it's a good game i don't think i don't think it's a great game um but after that they just they just couldn't do it the thing about sonic is sonic had two things that was his appeal his attitude and his speed that was it that that yeah. was that was sonic right the the over they overstuffed Sonic. Um, again, this is the thing I wanted to talk about. You've got Archie comics that have like 
oh, crazy lore for Sonic, and it's like, is this actually Sonic's lore? I mean, Sonic was part yeah. of a genocide in, in the comic books. It's like, what the hell? Do you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's insane. Um, but I think that's where they went wrong. I mean, they, they did try too late, far too late, to put Sonic into other games, doing things like Sonic, um, Sonic all-star racing transformed i think it was yeah. called which is good but obviously at that point it was literally oh so you're trying to do so, mario kart with sonic speaking of sonic here do you think because he has such like a, a a witty sarcastic personality that anytime they fall short of that it just ends up hurting his image more than helping you know what i'm saying like mario it's kind of hard to mess up mario's personality you can throw him in any game and he's fine like mario rabbits we talked about earlier mm -hmm. um it, he he performs fine in that game just as he does every other game. But Sonic, if you mess up the personality at all or the the wittiness, it's very easy to not feel like Sonic, and I think that's what makes it harder for something like Sonic to compete. Do you, do you agree? I agree with that. Yeah, and I think the biggest problem is Sonic was made at a time when Sega were aggressively trying to go after Nintendo. I mean, the whole point yeah. behind Sonic's attitude was Sonic was supposed to embody the attitude of Sega. They, he was supposed to be a character that says, I don't care for the rules, I want to play by different rules, and I'm yeah. fast. The whole premise behind Sonic was to say, we are Sega, we have the Sega Genesis, the Sega Mega Drive, and this is what it is. We have more attitude, we'll have more adult games, and our games run faster than Nintendo. And they literally diluted that mission statement down into a character, and that character was Sonic the Hedgehog. And as Sega has changed its sort of a policies and its the way it wanted to develop games and develop consoles, which RIP Sega in the console market, I love the Dreamcast, probably my favorite mm -hmm. console ever um sonic didn't have that linchpin behind it anymore it became a third party title and they just didn't promote it they didn't push it they didn't like for them it's like well oh if we make this sonic game amazing if we market it and say he's the best thing ever you can also buy his game on nintendo you can also buy his game on sony do you know what i mean so yeah he can't he can't really be a mascot anymore he's Ma sonic is gone as a mascot because there's no sega console anymore so i just think that he lost that little bit of shine along the way and with like things like terrible cartoon series and stuff like that which is something that mario strayed away from up to now well <laughs> unless we include the original mario movie and stuff <laughs> we've we've had a discussion about the mario movie before we won't we won't yeah. go into that one again we'll table that one but um the thing about sonic is like i say i think they've just lost the way and with nintendo they, they never lost sight of the goal with mario and that was let's put mario into every single thing that we can that it makes sense to have mario in that's yeah. literally i think the way nintendo done it because i've spoke about this before um with regards to Mario Kart, Mario Kart was originally a prototype for a two-player version of F-Zero because it uses that parallax scrolling that F-Zero used where you kind of go into the screen and it's like a quasi-3D. And yeah. when they made it, they couldn't get it to run fast enough. It went too slow. It just went too slow. So Miyamoto said, like, just do something with it. And the guys were really into Formula One and kart racing at the time. So they decided to mm -hmm. change the spaceships into carts. And they're like, look, this is, this is great. We've got, like, kart racing. It looks like it's a lot of fun. And Miyamoto went, put mario on it i want you put mario yeah. on it put the mario characters in it and the game was that the game was born now you honestly imagine if they had released mario kart as a kart racer without the fun things like shells and mario and luigi and donkey kong that game would not have yeah. done anything that game would have died no, not at you all. Know? literally me and moto coming in and saying mario will work in this it did, the game blew up. I mean, how many games yeah. can you take? Look at Mario Party. If they'd used genetic characters, would it be the success it is just now? Absolutely well, not. the answer is no, because it didn't work for Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bash. Didn't work for Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Blast, I think it was called. Didn't work for that. Mm -hmm. um, they've tried it with different characters and it, it doesn't work. I mean, you can take the exact same yeah. game formula and it, it doesn't work without Mario. Um, there's a few games like that and it just didn't, it just doesn't work. I mean, take Smash Brothers, for example. Yeah. Um, that was kind of about more around Nintendo, but Mario's always been front and center, front and center in that as well. Take that yeah. exact same game and put generic characters in it or new creations. It would not be the success it is today. A lot of it comes down to how Nintendo view Mario and how they promote Mario. So to me, nothing has come near 
In fact, just even the funny thing is, that list you just rhymed off there, Mario, Pikachu, Sonic, Pac-Man, take Sonic and Pac-Man for example, they are now mm. being promoted by Nintendo in a Nintendo yeah. game, Smash Brothers, which is being headed up by Mario. He's always front and center on the cover, you know? That is, um, it's their biggest inclusion nowadays, you know? Yeah. You know, so they and literally so, are, are now, they've took other people's mascots away from them, you know? Pretty much. Um, so you, you kind of touched on this a little bit. Do you think m some of his success comes from him being limited to Nintendo consoles, you know, uh, or Nintendo handhelds as well? That That's the only place you can get your hands on Mario is on Nintendo. So if you go out of your way to get Nintendo, you're more likely to fall in love with him because that's what you're going to see. I think it, it kind of breeds a... Um, I can't, I can't think of the word, but you, you just get so involved in Nintendo that you just learn to love these characters. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, like, we can even just use Sony as an example here as well, mm -hmm. unfortunately, because I know that you're a big Xbox fan. Um, oh, it's the, fine. The, the, the thing is, exclusivity sells. If you know yeah, the only, if the only, if you know the only place you're going to get an exclusive experience, like, for now, for Sony, it's Spider-Man, obviously, and, um, mm -hmm. God of War, Kratos, and stuff like that. I wouldn't call any of them mascot characters, but the system sellers, do you know what I mean? The thing is, yeah. Nintendo owns the full IP around their system sellers. Um, I don't know quite how it works with Sony. I know they own Santa Monica Studios, but I don't know if they own God of War, and I don't, they obviously don't own Spider Man, do you know what I mean? So yeah. Nintendo make a lot more, and they also know, without sounding like cheap, if they stick mario in something if they just literally stick mario in it people will probably buy it um, they've oh, got, yeah. they've, they've got to that stage with them let's just release mario dlc oh people suddenly pick up and they want to have a look at it do you know what i mean whereas before I mean, they might I'll, have been like hmm. i'll bring it up again mario rabbits right a game that by itself does not sell without putting mario on it yeah and and you you you're telling me it's an xcom uh you know turn-based top-down yep type of game that, but that game was good too, you know? Um, and it, it sold pretty well, simply because you put Mario in it. And I think that's a testament right there. Uh, of course, there's other examples, but that's the, that's the one I can think of off the top of my head. But that's actually you a just, good one as well, because that actually says that Nintendo aren't afraid to take these characters in a different direction. They aren't yeah. afraid to... Who, I mean, honestly, who at a pitch meeting sat down and they sat there and people says, let's bring out a Mario game that's essentially XCOM. And people are like, what's XCOM? It's a game where you yeah. use squads to hunt aliens. That That is a pitch, do you know what I mean? And they go, that's a great idea. Let's let's do that for Mario. Most other companies would be like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? They wouldn't want to go anywhere yeah. near it, but Nintendo went, well, yeah. The, the other thing as well is Nintendo do this. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm still confused about how Pokemon works. I thought Nintendo owned that <laughs> Game Freak owned that it's confusing yeah but you look at something like pokemon snap where they're working with um, namco bandai. bandai you look at mario party i'm not sure if it's still hudson soft that made it but originally it was hudson soft that made it you look at mario golf that wasn't made by nintendo that was made by game love i don't know if it's game something um mm -hmm. but it wasn't made in-house by nintendo so nintendo will allow people to make things for their characters like if it wasn't for mario golf which isn't a nintendo creation we wouldn't have waluigi because they needed another character to partner with wario so they created this new character um mm -hmm. so other things can come from nintendo's mascot because nintendo are willing to engage with other companies and i yeah. think the fact that they will not allow mario to appear on any other console was probably the best decision they could make i mean for Obviously, sure. Microsoft have allowed Banjo Kazooie to appear on Nintendo, but that doesn't mean Nintendo would ever consider letting Mario appear on an, uh, an Xbox game. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it just goes to show you the value of a property where other people are willing to lend out their mascot characters to Nintendo, but there's no chance Nintendo would do it the other way. Because that's their whole business, you know? Exactly. It's just holding on, holding on real tight to those, those IPs. So the last question I have here is more of a... Kind of experiment thinking one uh but it's gonna I'm, I'm sure i'm putting you on the spot with it so you're presented with the opportunity to make a mascot that can compete alongside mario how do you how are you designing your character that's a that's a question it, I'm, I'm not really I, I, well well basically I'll, you know what i'll just take what we've taken if you from take this what's discussion. worked from characters we've talked about so far what does yeah. your character look like 
well, basically, he would ha he wouldn't really have a personality. Um, he wouldn't. I, mm. I would basically try and build the the world around the character around the world as opposed to the world around the character, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I still think anthropomorphic creatures have quite a lot of love for people. You know, like people love the design of Sonic. People oh, love yeah. the idea the of that. You know, there's not very many um, human mascot characters you know they, they tend to yeah. want to go for the animal because like you can release plush toys and stuff like that that exactly th th i mean that appeal to children and stuff but the main thing i think it would be would i think the character would be secondary to the world and i don't think it's necessarily what nintendo went for in the first instance but it's kind of what's happened now mario mario is like a cog in the machine because it's his world, his cast of characters round about him that make Mario mm -hmm. so appealing. But without Mario, you don't have access to all that. You know, like the Bowsers, the, yeah. the Warios, the Luigi's, the Peaches, the Bowser Juniors and stuff like that. None of them exist without Mario. I think that's fair. I, and I agree with the, anim, uh, the animal aesthetic thing too. Because even looking outside of video games, one of the biggest um, mascots in the world is Hello Kitty, you know? Mm-hmm huge in uh japan yep and i i know nothing about hello Kit kitty's personality the depth of it just that it's a cute cat you know like yep. and that sells that's all you need to sell it works for pikachu you know yep just a cute electric mouse and that's really the depth of his personality sonic's a hedgehog and you know he's cute you know yep and i think that's it's kind of weird how mario separates himself from the rest of these because if you look at the other human ones they're mostly bad asses, right like master chief kratos Mario's just a plumber, you know? Yeah. I think it's so weird that he was able to attain this status without needing these other qualities that these other ones seem to do. The thing is, you as well, a lot of it comes down to simplistic design as well. Just look at Mario. He's a he's a guy who wears blue overalls with a red hat and a red shirt. It's bold, mm -hmm. bright colours, things that appeal to kids, you know? Um, they, yeah. they knew what they were doing. They've done it right. My, my son's favourite colour is red because of Mario. Um, <laughs> like Literally, his bedroom is red. Painted bright Mario red. It looks... Yeah. When, when you turn the light on, you lose some of your retina response. You're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but, do you know what I mean? He just... I just yeah. think that Nintendo knocked it out of the park with us. You don't see people having deep discussions on the internet about Mario's backstory and Mario's lore. I've literally seen people mm -hmm. having arguments about Sonic, do you know what I mean? Yeah, for you sure. Know? So, yeah. But yeah. Well, that's it for me. That is that's basically it anyway. I mean, guys, I just want to say that it means a lot to us that you've joined us for videos like this. We are hoping to do more deep discussions and deep dive videos in the future. But I want you to let us know in the comments why you think Mario makes such a great mascot. If you disagree with what I've said, make sure you let us know why. If you disagree with what Clark said, also give us the same feedback. We love to hear it. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media to get a heads up or to, on what's coming up next on the channel or to interact with us easier. I'm Hazink. I'd like to thank Clark for taking the lead on this one and doing such a great job. Uh, and until next time, take it easy, guys. See ya. Bye.